will take you please to Matthew chapter 24 beginning back in the third verse again just as Jesus talking to his disciples <coughs> and as he sat up on the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. First of all, how many of you noticed that everybody on TV is saying, God's going to help us? I don't care if it's Saddam Hussein, or if it's the Israelites, or if it's the Christians. Have you noticed that? Huh? Okay. Why? Because we all are from the uh, uh, same God, God of Abraham. But what happened along this Okay. First of all, the Jew Jewish people did not recognize their own Messiah. Okay. Sure. Secondly, it's like the Word of God says here, and Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. The Arab nations were deceived by, by a prophet by the name of Mohammed. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. For instance, this guy came along and said he was Mah this great prophet, Muhammad, and uh, that he was Christ, and he deceived the whole Arab nation. And so they believe in God to save them. My dear people, it says in John chapter 9, verse 31, the Lord does not hear the prayer of a sinner. I don't think he hears them, do you? Why doesn't he hear them? Because they are not bought and paid for through the blood of the Lamb there is one door one way and it is through the blood of Jesus Christ through the blood of Jesus Christ see it doesn't matter what you believe it doesn't matter what you say it doesn't matter what I say it's what this says it's the word of God that's the final authority that's the final authority there is none other Verse six, 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rulers of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. <laughs> Lord help us. Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. I don't think I have to tell you about all the famines, the pestilence, and the earthquakes, do it? world's in bad shape. Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So where does Iraq fit in this? Because I'm not going to take you any farther than there. Iraq. In the Word of God, we would track this all the way through and we will be doing so in the following weeks. I'm going to, and I'll, I'll give you a, a little pretext of what I'm going to be teaching about. Uh, Iraq is the beginning of sorrows. Iraq is the beginning of sorrows. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I really prayed a long, long time about for this. <laughs> and <clears throat> you got to remember that from Adam to Abraham, it's 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus Christ is 2,000 years. From Jesus Christ to the present day is 1991, isn't it? 1,991 years. Or bring us up to a date of 5,991 years. Now, there are four years, plus or minus, difference because of the Jewish calendar. Just four years. Okay, but that's true, don't leave as much time to tell you it's like 6,000, does it? So, <clears throat> let's reverse the time span. Let's go back to the thousand year millennium and back it up and see what we're at. If you go back <coughs> to Revelation 20, chapter 4, I mean, yeah, Revelation 24, through the millennium, the thousand year reign of Christ on the earth. Now, <coughs> before that can happen, y'all with me now? It's very important. Before that can happen, we have to have the second coming of Christ. We have to have the second coming of Christ before the thousand year millennium. Before the second coming of Christ, or I should say at the same time, we have Armageddon. 
Armageddon happens at the same time. As the second coming, as Christ is coming out with the air, he is with his saints. He's not coming for his saints, he's with his saints. And he touches down in the city of the New Jerusalem and we win. Praise God. Now, so before the thousand year reign of Christ on the earth, before the second coming of Jesus Christ, and which is, which is the battle of Armageddon, we must have, according to the Bible, seven years of tribulation, according to the book of Daniel, which I will be teaching about. Now, the seven years of tribulation, what is that? That's when the Antichrist is loosed upon the earth. My dear people, I wouldn't want to be here. So, before the thousand year reign, before the second coming of Christ and Armageddon, before the seven years of tribulation, what has to happen? The rapture of the church. The rapture of the church. Now, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Um, chapter 4. Verses 16 and 17. talking about the coming of the Lord. The Word of God says, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, I'm listening for it any time, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and with the dead in Christ shall rise first. In other words, the dead people will actually rise first. You say, dead people rising first? My dear people, do, we not, do, we, do, not, do not we believe in the resurrection of Christ? Yeah. Huh? I'm going to tell you something else. Did you know when, when, uh, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, there was about 500 people also rose from the dead and walked about the city of Jerusalem? Did you know that? Yeah. So it's already happened. It's verse 17. Then we, who's we? The born again Christian. Woo! Huh? We, which are alive, we are alive, and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's when Jesus Christ comes for the saints. That is before the tribulation. Okay. He comes for the born again Christian. Alright? Now, you say, comes for us alive? We're going to be alive? That's right. You know, I don't know what they're going to do with these old dead bodies laying around here. <laughs> I wonder what kind of excuse they're going to have for that. Yes, we will be caught up alive. Has that already happened? Yes. Elisha, Enoch, various characters through the Bible were translated directly to heaven. It's all, the, it's all in the Word of God. It's already happened. Okay. So, <clears throat> before the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, before the second coming and the battle of Armageddon, what, ha what happens? The seven year tribulation. Before that, the rapture of the church. Okay? So what does that put us in the time frame? My dear people, if you take seven years and add it to the, this 5,991, we are past due. We are past due. If you take one generation and, 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 and add it to the rebirth of the nation of Israel, we are past due. We are past due. And we've we got to thank God for His long-suffering and His mercy because we are past due. I'm not putting time limits on anything. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. Exactly what it says. Jesus Christ said, when the fig tree buds, look up. Look up. He said, when Israel as a nation is restored, to look up. When Jesus was talking to His disciples uh, 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 in the garden, in there, on that rock, there was no nation of Israel. I want to tell you something else. In, uh, the, the, in 608 B.C., 608, uh, Israel ceased as a nation. And in 1948, it was restored. Okay? So what happened in 608 B.C.? In 608 B.C., it went into a Babylonian uh, captivity. Now I'm going to show you where the prophet Ezekiel prophesied that. Ezekiel uh, chapter 37. <coughs> Verse 
verses 21 and 22. This is Ezekiel prophet. Ezekiel the prophet, and he's saying, And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. Hallelujah. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be gathered or divided into two kingdoms any more at all. So we have the prophet Ezekiel telling history being foretold. How many Jewish people have returned to the nation of Israel? To date, and I'm going to show you something here in just a minute, they have had Jewish people from 120 Gentile nations speaking 83 different languages that have already returned to the nation of Israel to date. Already. In May 14, 1948, Israel came back into national existence and the prophecies relating to the restoration of the nation of Israel began to be accurately fulfilled and they had been, just like clockwork. You set your clock by them. Yes, my dear people, we are the rapture generation. There's no doubt about it. We are the rapture generation. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to share with you some of the prophecies concerning the return of the Jewish people to Israel. In Isaiah 11:12, 12, these are real short, but chapter 11, Verse 12. And he shall set up a, an ensign, or that, that actually that, mean, that word means banner, for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Jeremiah 29, 14. Prophet Jeremiah. This is in 596 B.C. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. And in Jeremiah 32, chapter 32, we find verses 37 and 38. Oh, I will gather them out of all countries, whether I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath and I will bring them again into this place and I will cause them to dwell safely and they shall be my people and I will be their God. Let's go to the prophet Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 10 saith the Lord God I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered and I will give you the land of Israel. <coughs> and then one more here. I'm sorry, two more. Ezekiel uh, chapter 20. What do I got here? Verse 34. I will bring you out of I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out verses 41 and 42 I will accept you with your sweet savior when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I say bring you into the land of Israel into the country for the, the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers and in one more chapter 36 chapter 36 verse 24 for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. My dear people, <clears throat> at present time, there have returned the Jewish people from, like again, like I said, 120, 
I mean, from 120 Gentile nations, speaking in 83 different languages. Oops. I cut this out of the Daily Tele Telegraph <coughs> one week ago. From our, it says our Tel Aviv correspondent. Soviet Jewish immigrants were arriving in Israel at the rate of 100 an hour yesterday as the government mounted an unprecedented airlift following the latest developments in the Kremlin. It is expected to, that up to 5,000 immigrants will have been flown to Israel by tonight and in a massive operation involving Israeli and East European op uh, airlines. Israeli officials pledged that the airlift would be stepped up to evacuate as many of the Soviet Jews as possible. According to reports from Moscow, tens of thousands of immigrants are now streaming toward transit centers in Hungary, Romania, and Poland to await flights to Israel. It's happening this very moment. You say, well, why isn't that on the news? I've told you why. There's a spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist is in this EC. So what's that? Well, I'm going to be teaching on that. And it blinds people. It blinds you, my dear people. It blinds everybody. Particularly the news media. Now, I'm just about finished here. Back to Luke, chapter 21. Verse 29. Verse 29. And he spoke to them a parable. <clears throat> Behold, the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see, and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. My dear people, you must remember when, when Israel was reborn in 1948, it was nothing but desert. If you go there now, it's a garden. Everything is green, irrigated, lush, fruit, it, you name it. So likewise ye, when you see these things come to pass, we've seen them come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. <coughs> Verily I say unto you, this generation, this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with serviting and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that day may come upon you unaware. For as a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Praise God. My dear people, we are the most important generation that has ever lived in the history of the church. We are living eyewitnesses to the, the restoration of Israel. The fig tree has budded and Jesus Christ has said that this generation will not pass away until all things will be fulfilled. The writing is on the wall, is it not? In the words of Jesus in Luke uh, 21 verse 28, and when these things <clears throat> begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Mm -hmm. He's not saying wait. He's saying when these things begin to come, begin, they've already begun, my dear people. When they begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. My dear people, time is very short. The rapture, which I will be teaching about, is very, very past due. And I do realize this is a, a very first meeting. But you know, in John's Gospel, chapter 3, <coughs> Jesus... Oh, actually, Nicodemus. There was, a, there was a religious leader by the name of Nicodemus. 
And this religious leader, I want you, I want you all, if you would, just close your eyes and bow your heads with me, please. You see, all of you. Yeah, I just think. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Matter of fact, I want you to all stand with me, if you would, please.